Hi, welcome to another video. I am today doing something fun. I am jumping in and having a look at a new drawing tool that is AI powered. It's called Diagramming AI. So come and explore it with me. Let's have some fun and see what it can do for us. Great, so let's have a look at this tool called Diagramming AI. So there are two, it is based on two different basically coding standards or languages, diagramming code languages. The one is called Plant UML and the other is called Mermaid. So we'll have a look at what happens when we ask it to draw a diagram for us in both of these languages and see where we land. So just at a very basic level, you can create your project, give it a name like you would in any project. So I'll just say test UML <coughs> activity diagram file. So we'll save that. And then what we'll do is we'll have a look here at what templates do they have available. So just note that we are currently in plant UML mode. So if I say select templates, it gives me specifically UML templates to choose from. And in this particular case study or this experiment I'm doing with you, I'm going to just ask it to use an activity diagram in its basic form. So that's the mode or the type of diagram that I'm going to ask it to draw for us. Now I've pre-prepared some AI prompting for this particular instruction. So let's have a quick look at what did I ask. So I'm asking it to create a UML activity diagram that outlines the business process for managing employee timesheets. I'm saying that it should start with the employee creating and completing their timesheet. Then it should then follow on where the timesheet is validated, including any corrections that the employee might need to make. And once it's validated, then as correct, it will then need to be checked and approved by a manager. And then we're saying the final step of our process is going to show the approved timesheet information being submitted to the payroll system. I'm also saying to it, make sure the diagram is clear and straightforward and focuses on the business perspective rather than technical specifics. I'm asking it to include decision points for validation and approval processes and emphasize the flow from creation to payroll submission. And then finally, the diagram should be accessible to business analysts without a deep technical background, highlighting the key stages and interactions of this process. So just as a little case study, let's see what happens if we now ask it to do a diagram based on those instructions. Great, so let's see what, what the sequence is like and decide whether we think this is accurate or not. So basically we're saying employee creates timesheet, that's correct. So employee completes the timesheet and then the timesheet validation, is that needed? Yes. So there is a validation or what they should have said probably here, is there a correction required? Employee makes that correction and then the process ends. Then it says, no, there's no correction required. So the manager checks and approves the timesheet. Then the approved timesheet is submitted to the payroll system. So all of that is correct with perhaps the only point here is that if we wanted the employee to resubmit the timesheet once they have actually corrected it, it would have been nice to see that flow back to the employee could complete timesheet or something similar to accommodate that um, process to that exception process to go through as a success process. But apart from that, this is a nice straightforward diagram, easy to understand, and it covered pretty much, I would say, 90% of what, it asked, what we asked it to do. So that's excellent. Now let's see if we ask it in mermaid mode to do the same thing. So let's submit again. So if we have a look at the mermaid version, as you can see, the notation is a bit different. It is not specifically UML activity diagram notation, but let's follow the flow and see if it's actually making sense. So it says by starting employee creates and completes timesheet. Is it a valid timesheet? No, employee makes necessary corrections and it goes back again. That's excellent. This is something that was not catered for in the other version. 
Then if we say yes, so manager checks and approves timesheet, is it ready for payroll submission? No, so the manager has to again check and approve the timesheet. This is actually not something we asked for, which is interesting that it's added that check. And then finally, we say yes, it is ready for payroll submission and it submits the um, timesheet to the payroll system. So that is excellent. Um, overall, this one is slightly different using a different code base for diagramming. Um, and as you can see, there's some differences in the logic. But again, I would say it catered maybe even a bit more and a bit more than we actually asked for than the other one. However, this notation is quite sloppy and it's not using UML activity diagram notation. So overall, I would say this gives us a good starting point, um, especially if you're new to business analysis and process mapping. Now, one other thing that you can see here is that give us an ability to do some quick edits. Now, this is really just helping us in terms of how do we want the process map to look? Do we want it to flow from top to bottom like this one? Or do you want it from bottom to top? Or do you want it from right to left? Or finally, do you want it left to right? Now, left to right, it automatically adapts it. And as you can see, this is more what we typically do as BAs when we do process mapping. But you can do top to bottom or anything else. Um, but my personal preference is this. And then the curve style. Here you can play around with the different ways that you would like the curving to look. So step based is possibly better. Um, step after. There's all these different varieties that I would I would let you play with whatever you think looks best. And then there's some other settings here that you can use to help you with editing it. But overall, that is quite limiting because you can't click on your particular outputs to change them. And that could potentially be a limitation. So I would say for our purposes and what we use this for, it is probably more useful for people that would like to do code based diagramming rather than business analysis diagramming. But you know, there's more diagrams to play with. So I will definitely explore more and get back to you on whether there's other use cases for this particular tool diagramming AI. But I thought for today, this is a fun way just to show you what's possible with process mapping um, if you provide it with clear instructions. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Just in case you were interested, let me show you the plans quickly. You can sign up for a free plan, but to be honest, I ran out really quickly when I started playing with the tool. But you can actually go for a quite a cheap three dollars us dollars a month um, and then you've got unlimited diagrams unlimited projects and so forth and there's a lot of fun to be had and i think it's a great educational tool as well so perhaps have a look and play around with it so what did you think of diagramming ai i would love to know in the comments below so please comment and let me know I'm going to delve deeper and find, find out more how we can use this tool because I know there's a lot of other templates that we haven't even looked at today to see how it can help us as business analysts to be better and deliver higher quality work faster in this ever-changing world of business analysis. So I hope you had fun just having a quick look and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.